there I am. Thank you, choir. Oh, let's, oh shoot. I forgot to tell you that I did send you a PowerPoint five minutes before church with the scripture on it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is a long parable. Maybe they like to see it. I'm so sorry, Paul. So don't worry, don't worry if it uh, doesn't come together. Um, so today's, we're in the parables of Jesus. And today's parable is a tough parable. It's a difficult parable to make sense out of. It's the laborers in the vineyard, and it's in Mark chapter 20. Uh, should I give you a minute to... Oh, is it up? Not Paul, to Paul in the back. Woohoo! Thank you. Jesus is speaking. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers, for a denarius for the day, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out around nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, oh, the first slide was messed up. Did you figure that out? Yeah, I couldn't, I didn't know how to fix it. Okay, back to Jesus. Uh, then he went out again about noon and about three o'clock and he did the same and about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around and said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us, he said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired around five o'clock came, each of them received a denarius. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? And then Jesus says, so the last will be first and the first will be last. Uh, the scholar, as you know, that I've been using for these parables is Amy Jill Levine, who is a uh, professor at Vanderbilt, and she's a Jew who studies the New Testament. And her insights are so powerful into what Jesus' original listeners heard in these parables. And she's so funny on this one. She's like, why do we call this the laborers in the vineyard? Why isn't it called the parable of the complaining day laborers or the, the parable of the surprising salaries? <laughs> so she goes through the, the traditional interpretations of this parable. And most traditional interpretations start with the premise that this parable is about salvation, that it's about who gets into heaven, who is accepted by God, who will be saved. So one interpretation is that the first group, the early riser, the early job people are the Pharisees, the Jewish religious leaders, and they're the ones who have toiled, you know, their entire lives keeping God's law. And then the last people hired are the tax collectors and sinners. Uh, the, the, what's the word? The, the segment of the population that they don't approve of, but whom Jesus hangs out with. So the second interpretation is similar that the first group isn't just the Pharisees, but it's all, all Jewish people who seek to abide by God's law. And then the last group is the Gentiles, or in other words, us, 
like God, you know, their whole history is trying to be obedient and follow God. And now all of a sudden, at the last minute, Gentiles are included in. There's also another, there's actually a number of interpretations. These are the main ones. Another one scholars have used is that this is about God as a God of affirmative action. And that the last group are people of color, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, native and indigenous peoples. And the point is that Jesus is going to welcome everybody into the vineyard. Well, Dr. Levine poses this question. What if this parable isn't at all about salvation? What if it's about economics? So, as we go to the parable, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is like a landowner. This word is just, uh, it, it could mean householder, it could mean master of a household. Her point is that at the beginning of the parable, there's really not a signal if the landowner is God or not. Right now, it's just a story. There once was a landowner, right? The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early. Now, he goes to the marketplace looking for workers. Now, I don't, I've never seen this happen in Denver, but I spent most of my adult life in Southern California. And any Californians here who might, all right, okay, never mind. So every Home Depot, there was a gang of Latino men who would hang out at the Home Depot waiting for day work. They were day laborers needing work. And so anybody who was doing construction in the area, because early in the morning, Home Depot was really busy with contractors, people driving in to get their you know, supplies for the day. And typically what would happen is, you know, if you're a contractor and you need work, you drive up to this, this group of men, and you, like you need six guys, you do this, and the first six to hop in your truck, they're the ones that get the work, right? So this happens all day, and at the end of the day, um, there's usually guys left, like not everybody always gets picked up for work. And so as we, as we look at this phenomenon, it's, it, it's not an indicator that there was high unemployment in the time. Um, this was just a thing. People looking for, for, for day work. In fact, you know, archaeology and history almost signals it was a, it was a robust economy. Uh, so we're not looking at, a, at a high poverty. These are guys looking for work, and not everybody is going to get it every day. So when at, at 6 o'clock, the landowner goes out there and he, let's see, after agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into the vineyard. So they had a contract. A denarius was a Roman coin, and as best as we can figure, it could feed a family for about three to six days. So it was, a, it was a good wage. It was a fair wage. So he makes this agreement at 6 o'clock, and then it just starts to get, like, nonsensical, like just kind of weird. Like the landowner goes back at 9 o'clock. He goes back at 12 o'clock. He goes back at 3 o'clock. He goes back again at 5 o'clock. And so one might think, is he just a bad manager of his vineyard, <laughs> like he doesn't know how many workers he needs, why didn't he just hire everybody at the beginning of the day if he was going to do this, right? There's just a lot of questions. But remember, it's a story, right? It's a story that has a point, and so we just kind of need to go with the story. So each time he goes back, what he says is... Uh, he did the same, where does it say? Oh, you go into the vineyard, I will pay you whatever is right. So he doesn't promise them a denarius. He doesn't actually say up front what he's going to pay them. He says, I'm going to pay you what is right. And so finally, he goes at the end of the day, five o'clock, they go to the vineyard and they work for what, an hour? Okay, so... The you know what hits the fan at the end of the day when they start to to pay the workers for their daily wage. So um, 
Oh, and I forgot to tell you, this word right, the homeowner says, I will give you whatever is right. The word is diakaios. It means whatever's just, whatever's fair, whatever's proper. But the root word also connotes charity and righteousness. I will do right by you, he says. So it keeps going for back for more workers. Uh, and some scholars, some biblical interpreters have wondered, so were the people standing around at the end of the day, were they sick? Were they infirm? Were they old? Were they not skilled? It's like, why, you know, is there a message in going back at the very end of the day to get the stragglers? There's really nothing in the parable that suggests that. And what I can tell you is that when you would drive by a Home Depot in Southern California, it was kind of a homogenous group. It was, you know, young to middle-aged men. They all looked fit and ready to work. So I don't think we can read that extra interpretation into it. You know, let's think of these workers as equal. They were just showing up at different times in the workday. So he brings out the farm manager to pay them. And this is interesting because at the beginning of the parable, the, he's called the landowner. Uh, so it doesn't immediately connote that the landowner is God, just the owner of the household. But at the end of the parable, he is called, oh, see, I'm, I'm not finding, I should have highlighted. He's called the Lord of the vineyard. I know this. I don't need my notes. He's called the Lord of the vineyard. And often the vineyard is used to describe the nation of Israel. So at that moment, the, the Jesus listeners are like, oh, maybe this is God. You know, God is the Lord of the vineyard. And the Lord of the vineyard says, I want you to pay the last first. And so the guys that started work at five o'clock and worked for an hour get, guess what? A whole denarius. The people that came at three get a denarius. The people that came at noon get a denarius. People came at 9 a.m. get a denarius. And then the first group, the ones who had agreed upon getting a denarius, think they're going to get more, and they don't. They just get a denarius, and they are upset. And we can understand this. I would be upset. Wouldn't you be upset? They're like, we have worked all day in the scorching sun for a denarius. And those guys that showed up an hour before closing and barely bust a table are getting a denarius. We get it. It's righteous indignation, right, is what it feels like. But the landowner says to them, I'm doing you no wrong. I've not wronged you. I've treated you justly. The word can mean righteously, fairly. The landowner is saying, you are in the wrong. The householder is teaching them a lesson by showing them what is right. And what is right is paying each laborer enough to take care of their families. The, the question between the lines is, why aren't you happy about the good fortune of your coworkers? Why aren't you happy that they now have enough to feed their families? Why are you upset that I am generous with what is mine? For Jesus, the question this parable raises isn't, are you saved? It's, do your children have enough to eat? It's the responsibility of the rich to make sure that everyone has enough through employment. So in the United States, 2022, the poverty line for a family of four is $27,700 a year. 
You guys, that is only $530 a week. So could you imagine supporting a family of four on $530 a week? Now, Colorado minimum wage is now $12.56 an hour. So for a 40-hour work week, you would get $502 a week. So minimum wage is below the poverty line. One in eight families in Colorado live below the poverty line. Now, our system of economics is capitalism, and there's a lot of things about capitalism that work, but there is a lot about capitalism that is broken because capitalism favors who? The landowners. Capitalism favors the rich, the company owners, the landowners. In capitalism, it, it, we have been sold a bill of goods that money trickles down. In capitalism, money trickles up. It trickles up to the shareholders and not down to the workers. This is what Jesus is talking about in this parable. What if every worker were paid a living wage? It's not just about being fair. This parable really challenges us because we think that fairness is what is good and right. We should strive for fairness. But Jesus takes fairness as a value and literally throws it under the bus. Because for Jesus, it's not about being fair, it's about doing what is right. That's what righteousness is. Righteousness is doing what is right. And in this parable, it's not, it's not about who's going to be saved by God and welcomed into the vineyard, God's kingdom. It's about who's going to have enough to feed their children. That's why this is such a difficult parable. That's why so many people don't really want to look at it for what it really says, because it has implications for our economy. It's really, this parable is about money. And we don't like to talk about money, right? It's so awkward, but it matters. And it matters in this country how we pay people. So I know a lot of you guys are retired, you're kind of out of the workforce now, but you still have a voice and a vote. And if you ever get a chance to vote on a living wage for people, if you have friends who employ people, I like to call it capitalism with a heart. <laughs> There's nothing inherently wrong with capitalism, but if we could start shifting our system instead of worrying about the profits that go to the top, what if we worry more about how many people we could employ? Why aren't we more worried about employing people than we are about the profits a company makes? This is the stand Jesus took. Yes, we do want eternal life. But what we know is that we're already there. God embraces us all. Jesus is preaching about the here and now, how we love our neighbor, how we practice economics in the kingdom of God. Will you pray with me? Lord God, Jesus, wow. <laughs> Help us to take his words and embody them in our very beings that we might pay attention, God, to what is right and what is generous, not just what is fair, so that we can love our neighbor and take care of those around us. Through Christ we pray. Amen.